On a grey day in London, I'm hanging out, waiting for a VIP to arrive. Actually, I'm waiting for this lorry, and in it, a shining star of late 20th century furniture. They're undressing a Lockheed lounge, a piece that turned Mark Newsom into the design equivalent of a rock star. She, and the Lockheed is definitely a she, is something of a diva, even arriving with her own security guard. And now, she's ready for her close-up. Mark Newsom was just 23 when he made 13 of these improbable objects with his bare hands. He couldn't get rid of them then. These days, they're so valuable, we're not even allowed to sit on them. Is it comfortable? Well, no, not really. It, uh, it was never really intended to be comfortable, but when I was in art school, my sort of rule of thumb was that if it was more comfortable than a, than a bus stop, it would sort of generally qualify as being something, <laughs> something worth sitting on. But it was, it was kind of more of a sculpture, I think, than a, than a chair. The chair was just a way of, um, it was an excuse to, to, you know, to, to bring it to life. In the back of his mind, Jacques-Louis David's famous portrait of Madame Recamier on a chaise of the traditional variety. A Lockheed reference came later, in homage to the Lockheed Corporation, when Mark realized his riveted aluminium exterior called aircraft construction. You know, I had this vision of an object in my head. I mean, I had, I had the shape in my head, and I had the material in my head. I mean, I had, I had the, its sort of visual aspect, I and mean, I, I had an, a, a pretty accurate idea of, of, of what it looked like. A globule of, of mercury or something, like a, a, a seamless, smooth, shiny object. But I really didn't know how I was going to do it. You know, I had no idea how I was going to realise this on, on a technical level. How um, did you? I got this big lump of foam in the backyard of a workshop that I was a friend's workshop that I was sharing. And I, I sort of traced some lines on with a, with a giant felt tip pen and started literally hacking away at this big lump of foam with a wire brush, a very, very sort of savage wire brush, and just kind of furiously sort of hacked away. And it was just like shit all over the place, you know, foam flying around at the neighbor's house. And it felt like a kind of a monumental moment for me. Because when it was done, it was done. It just sort of appeared. And then came, you know, the challenge of having to make it look like a piece of metal. I n never really originally wanted it to be covered, covered in, in, in panels. You know, this, this was really the only way I could think of achieving something close to the effect that I'd, that I'd visualised. 